The Board of Education uh, meeting is hereby convened. Uh, we are we are going to be standing in a, in a second uh, for the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence. Uh, we'd like to honor with a moment of silence Aline Page, a crossing guard in Northwest Rochester between school number 30 and Thomas Jefferson School who was killed on Tuesday, October 16, uh, when she was hit by a car. She also worked as a lunchroom aide at school number 34. We're also honoring Brian Harris, a teacher at Greece Arcadia High School who was, school, uh, who was killed while traveling on Lake Ontario State Parkway on Wednesday, October 18. His pickup truck hit a bridge that carries his money to road over Lake Ontario Parkway. Uh, so will you all please stand for a moment of silence for honoring these two persons and the Pledge of Allegiance to be led by Commissioner Elliott. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I would like to introduce Rosetta Washington, our student representative to the Board of Education. Uh, Ms. Washington is a senior at Charlotte High School, where she has a 4.0 grade point average. Uh, she's also the captain of the girls' varsity track team and president of the National Honor Society and president, president of the Student Government Association. She plans to attend the University of New Haven, Connecticut to study juvenile justice and we'd like to welcome Rosetta to the Board of Education. <laughs> we'll move on then to um, the meeting agenda. Uh, you have all received the minutes of the September 25th, 2007 meeting. I'll entertain a motion then to approve those minutes. So so moved. It's been properly moved and second. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, the next item is speakers addressing an agenda item, and we have none, as I understand. So we'll move on to the superintendent's report, <coughs> Dr. Kala. Thank you, Commissioner Garcia. Uh, graduation ceremony for Rochester City School uh, District students who graduated from high school in August was held on Wednesday, October 3rd at School of the Arts. This year, 122 high school students completed their high school graduation requirements by taking courses and exams over the summer. This is the first year a district-wide ceremony was held to honor the August graduates. Each year, approximately 100 Rochester City School District students complete their graduation requirements in August, going on to college, employment, or other opportunities. Uh, we hope that this will be uh, an annual event, and uh, we really enjoyed it, and it was just really very special, and we know the parents really appreciated it as well. Uh, this past week, uh, I had a meeting with Chief Moore to discuss uh, the, the issue of violence in the, in the city and also uh, to do our best and do the, the city to do their best uh, to protect all of our schools, especially School 8. Uh, we are also in, uh, involved in a, in a campaign called Step Inside School, uh, or, or, uh, to step inside, and uh, we started off with Step Inside School Without Walls at a news conference this past week. Um, it's an inv open invitation uh, to parents and community members to step inside the schools and see what they're like. Uh, so uh, the next uh, school on the list uh, will be uh, uh, at the four schools at Edison, and that will be in either December or January. And we're going to do four schools, Tom, uh, for that. Uh, so uh, we invite the community to, when you hear the, uh, see the, the press releases, that to step inside, that you do that and step inside to see what the, the Rochester City Schools are doing. Uh, this also last, uh, this uh, last week on Friday, 
uh, there was a hearing, a Senate hearing on uh, a task force on critical choices, uh, keeping youth on the right track. And the uh, purpose of the hearing was to discuss issues of dropouts and violence. And uh, I was uh, uh, pleased and honored to be able to provide testimony uh, uh, to the uh, senators. And I think they're uh, very sincerely interested in looking at ways of helping our entire community, uh, given the situation we're in with the uh, uh, recent uh, uh, events of violence that have been uh, plaguing the city, and uh, also looking at uh, uh, completion rates in school as well. Uh, again, I, I would like to uh, echo the, the uh, sentiments of uh, uh, Commissioner Garcia. Uh, it was a very difficult day uh, a couple of days ago uh, when Arlene uh, Page was struck and killed. And it not only affected, uh, you know, School 30, but it also a a affected School 34, School 43, uh, Jefferson, and Edison, because there were connections to all of those uh, schools. And as she was affectionately known as Grandma, uh, to many, many students, uh, we uh, are, are uh, sincere. Uh, uh, thoughts and prayers go out to uh, her family uh, in this uh, time of sadness. Uh, now, the the last uh, point from is a uh, uh, part of uh, my report. Uh, I'm going to bring uh, uh, Joanne Giafrida up to uh, give a report on hiring. Thank you, Superintendent Kala, Board. Uh, before I get into the report, which you have at your places. Um, I want to call your attention to a pink sheet of paper that you have at your places also. This is a substitute resolution. It is labeled 299A, and it's in place of 299 that was in your packet. Um, and this is a resolution that is creating and abolishing titles out of the superintendent's employee group. The difference between the original resolution and the resolution that you have in front of you is that we are creating fewer new titles in the superintendent's employee group. And so it's a reduced uh, resolution from that perspective. The titles that were in the original resolution will be filled through appointment by the Board of Education, as are all other positions in the school district other than those in the superintendent's employee group. What I'd like to do is call your attention to this multi-page report that you have at your place, which is our annual report on our, um, our efforts on the, on, the, on the distribution by race of our workforce in each of our employee groups during the hiring season for the 07-08 school year. The format of the report may look familiar to you since it's the format that we used last year for the same report at about this time. But uh, we did have the opportunity to present this report at the Quality Assurance Committee earlier this week and had a very good and productive discussion then. And also, um, was, I was able to take advantage of some suggestions to improve the report before the board meeting tonight, so I'm glad about that. Um, I thank uh, Commissioner Thompson and Commissioner White and Commissioner Brennan for their good ideas, and we'll be following up with their committee as a result of some of the data reported in this report. Um, this is organized, as I said, by employee groups, starting with the teacher group. And when you look at the graphs, you see three columns. The gray column is the column that represents a snapshot of our workforce in June of 2007. The, the purple column represents the rate of our hiring by race last year, 0607. And then the green bar represents the rate of hiring in each group for 0708. You will see at the bottom of those columns some numbers. Those are the raw numbers. So the percentages are registered at the top. The actual numbers are registered at the bottom. So if you read from left to right, just looking at the first column, for example, you will see that the distribution of our teaching workforce in June of 07 was that we had 2,500 and 648 um, white teachers, we had 258 African American teachers hired this year, last year, excuse me, for 0607. We hired 165 African American teachers for the 0708 school year. I'm sorry, white across, thank you, Shirley, I, thank you. All of those are statistics for the white workforce. 
If you look at the very bottom of the page, um, there are total numbers there, and they're important to look at because they give you some sense of scale. You can see that our total RTA workforces of last year was 3,428. And in 06-07, in we hired 372 new teachers, which is about 1% of our total teacher workforce. In 07-08, we hired fewer. We hired 245 teachers for something that is less than 1% of our total workforce. I think what's important to look at, rather than go over all the numbers and the figures in these reports, which you can certainly look at at your leisure, is to, to try and capture trends, which is why we report it this way. What we see is that we are hiring fewer white teachers than the percentage currently in the workforce, and that we are increasing our representation in hiring of African American teachers, and notably this year, Hispanic teachers. We had a big push this year to hire, uh, to fill a number of bilingual positions, and we had some very successful recruitment trips to Puerto Rico that aided in that effort. If you look at the next page, it will give you the same information for our certificated administrator workforce. Um, and you can see again that the hiring rate for the white population is down, particularly when compared with their representation in the workforce. And this group totals about 282. Um, you'll see that the representation is up for African Americans, up for Hispanics, compared to what they look like in the workforce. Oh, I forgot to mention on the first chart, so I'll mention it here. To your right, there are two pie charts. The pie charts give you the gender distribution. So the top pie chart is for 0607, the bottom is for 0708, and what it shows is that we have a predominant female workforce, both in teaching and in administrators, and probably in the others as well. Uh, the next page is the administrator group that falls under civil service. There are a total of 83 employees in this group. This is dominated by business services employees, information technology employees, analysts. Um, it's, it's a fairly small workforce. Um, you see again, though, the same trends, that when you look at the gray bars on the bar chart and you see what the current representation in the workforce is, our hiring efforts are working <coughs> toward increasing diversity in the workforce. The page five is the same distribution for the Bente workforce. I would say that in the Bente workforce, there are some rules about hiring and promotions that um, don't make it as open to recruitment as some of the other unions. For example, we are, are hiring in many cases off civil service lists. When we're not hiring off civil service lists, we are observing um, union promotional rules, bidding rules, and so forth in the contract, which is designed with good reason to provide promotional opportunities to our current workforce. The last page are for RAP is our paraprofessional union, and you can see that that is a workforce that's, a, that's about half African American to start with. Um, and, our, and our efforts there have been up and down. We're going to continue to see some variations in this workforce because we are introducing the title of teaching assistant, which is a new title that has higher requirements than we've historically had in this bargaining unit. And, um, and so it may, it may differ, vary the mix. I'm not sure. We're just about two years into it at this point. Attached to these charts are two pages which basically constitute a summary of what our recruitment activities were for the 0708 school year. So we've, we've given you information about some of the training we've done, some of the trips we've taken, some of the analysis that we're doing, um, partnerships that we have, and um, so forth. Uh, again, that was, a good, um, that was a good basis for our discussion at the Quality Assurance Committee meeting on Monday as well. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Um, just like to make a comment, um, and I, it's not me to criticize, but I am, I am still disappointed at the low number of people of color that have been recruited. And I would urge Dr. Kala and future HR uh, people to make a stronger effort 
in, in, in that area. Uh, Commissioner Powell. Uh, yes. Um, at one percent of the workforce hired each year, we would it would be a hundred years before we have a complete turnover in staff. Does that reflect a, a how, how much does that reflect attrition versus essentially a downsizing of our workforce to match a smaller enrollment? Right. Uh, that's a very good question, and as a matter of fact, you've, you've actually hit on one of the additional pieces of information that we're going to present to the Quality Assurance Committee next month. One of the interests is to know how many people are leaving each year, what the distribution of those who are leaving is, and to the extent that we can report it, the reasons for leaving, because that does help give us the overall analysis. We have some people leave every year. In general, I would say we do not have high turnover in our workforce neither in our teaching workforce nor in our workforce generally. Um, and that can be a good thing. Um, it certainly promotes stability. There are things that come along periodically, like retirement incentives, that do create turnover. Um, but that has to be managed very carefully, because our capacity to, to fill all those jobs and fill them with the kind of people we're looking for um, in a very short hiring season of three to four months is it's tough to manage. Um, uh, Commissioner, Garcia. Commissioner Elliott. Um, I have a, a, a couple of questions here, a few questions actually. First, I was just mentioning to um, Superintendent Kayla that it probably would have been a good idea that if we had this in a more, w that you've had the screen so that the audience was able to see it as well. Right. Is it possible that we can put this on the website so that uh, people who yes. in the audience Great idea. Um, Thank you. may be uh, interested in seeing this? Um, but I would also um, ask, um, in reference to, um, uh, I think someone mentioned about turnovers, what's the percentage of um, uh, black turnover, African American turnovers uh, to white turnovers? Because there seems, excuse me, there seems um, to, to be some issues that, and I don't know this for, for a fact, that's why I'm asking that we look into that rate. Um, there have been some people who've come to me that right. feel that they may have been um, asked to leave unfairly. Right. So if we can um, look at that yeah. information to see if there may be some right. issues there. If, if I may respond. Ask, are you asking that, are you asking to get that information now? Or are you no, asking, no, okay, no. fine, thank you. President Garcia. Commissioner. Uh, Thompson. If I might respond, this was precisely the information we requested at QA okay. on Monday, and so that's the information that will be forthcoming and it will be shared with the entire board. Right. Right. I appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, in reference to the types of jobs that are in the RAP union, uh, Bente, and the ASAR civil service, what mm -hmm. can you? Tell me what kinds of jobs are in those. <clears throat> the ASAR civil service group is pretty small, and it, it consists of analysts, accountants, budget analysts. Um, many of the positions are people who work in information technology. They tend to be uh, what I would consider technical, professional jobs, usually have college, uh, college degrees usually required. Um, we don't have a lot of them relative to the total workforce, but they're a very important and I want to say growing component of the workforce. We are, we are hiring more and more people in that workforce. Our information technology department alone has steadily grown and will continue to grow. So th that's the kind of people we have in ASAR civil service. The Bente unit is um, very diverse. It's probably our most diverse bargaining unit. We have what I would have traditionally called white collar jobs, the office support jobs, secretaries, clerks. Uh, we have um, some of the information technology staff are in Bente. We have food service. We have transportation. We have the whole maintenance and custodial uh, service. So very diverse workforce, blue collar, white collar. Um, and, you know, pretty stable employment in that group. Um, the paraprofessional group, they're basically um, staff that work in schools with children. They will work in special education classrooms to support the efforts of a special education teacher. Um, some of them work um, in computer labs in the elementary schools with specialized programs. They're like an extension of the teacher, and they work under the direction of a teacher. 
And just one last comment, President Garcia. It, it appears that what, another issue that I have is in term parity in salaries, because it appears that mm -hmm. uh, in reference to clerical staff, mm -hmm. who appear to be predominantly white female, those positions pay a lot of money, meaning 13 14 20 23 dollars an hour. But when you come to the paraprofessionals, mm -hmm. those who are working in the classroom where there is predominantly a black female population, those positions seem to pay less, like $9.33 an hour. Even when you're looking at the centuries, where that appears to be more black males, those positions seem to be, and I have a problem when we are paying secretaries that kind of money, and they're white females, but those people who are on the lines, meaning the centuries, and those uh, paraprofessionals in those classrooms, and they are primarily black, that we're not, there's not parity in salaries. How do we give a secretary that kind of money and not our um, par teacher assistants or paraprofessionals in our centuries? Right. So right. I, I would I like for us to right. look into that. Right. President well, Carter. you will, um, I will be in discussions with the board about that because we are in negotiations this year with the paraprofessionals. Thank you. Mm -hmm. President Garcia. Commissioner White. Yeah, I just, just wanted to note, I want to thank Commissioner Thompson for her work. A lot of this detail uh, came about as a result of her pushing and asking the administration right. for, for these reports. So I do think uh, she deserves a lion's share of the credit uh, because a lot of the dialogue that cannot happen today because of our limited agenda uh, was happening at the committee meeting. And I appreciate the work that she has spearheaded. So, so noted. Thank you. I have one quick question. You don't, you don't get to answer, uh, to ask questions, Mr. Ring. Uh, Commissioner, uh, uh, yeah, just, just one quick question. Um, has there been any um, successes with recruiting um, African American male elementary school teachers? I know that that's that's a challenge. I mean, I have a better chance of sometimes seeing a dinosaur, <laughs> seeing an, an African American male elementary school teacher. How, how are we Not doing necessary. in that area? Well, the answer is yes. We have successfully recruited out of the area to hire African American. Uh, male t elementary teachers, we have. I could give you numbers because actually we're going through the last two years of our recruitment activities right now to actually capture the information you're asking for. We'll send that to the Quality Assurance Committee meeting too. Thank you. Yeah. President Garcia, just one last question. And I would also point One last question, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. I would also point out that when we hire, when we're looking at hiring, uh, persons of, of color, that we're not just doing it to, just to have a face or just to be window dressing, but that right. we understand, they understand what it's like to work in an urban environment and can bring that kind of sensitivity to the, to the positions. Well, at the risk of the president yelling at me, I just want to say that in, your, in the summary on the recruitment efforts, because this is right on point with what you're suggesting. It, in the uh, second bullet of that first page, it talks about the fact that we've hired, uh, we've established an internal recruitment team who are trained in the Haberman interview process for the identification of star teachers for urban teaching. This is a research-based and validated hiring instrument that is designed to identify teachers who will be good candidates to work in urban school districts. And because we agree, this is a different breed of teaching. I've worked in a suburban school district. It's just different here. And we have to look for different qualities for successful teaching here. Thank you. Uh, thank you, President Garcia. Dr. Carla. Oh, I'm done. Thank you. Um, <laughs> that concludes the Dr. Carla report. We move on. Thank you. Uh, quickly, then, thank you, Ms. Jufrida. We move on then to um, um, board reports. Uh, Student report. Oh, the student report. That's right, uh, Ms. Washington. Okay, um, so far this year, the Student Leadership Congress has, has had our first meeting. Has had our first meeting. Our meeting was October 10, 2007. We had representatives from campuses such as Monroe, Wilson, East, Bioscience at Franklin, School of the Arts, Freddie Thomas, and of course, Charlotte. We start our first fundraiser actually in the mid of November. We're calling it Winter Warmth. We are collecting winter materials such as scarves, hats, mittens, those such things for the poor. We will have boxes in our local Rochester City School District schools in mid-November, so people please watch out for that and you know donate what you can and whatnot. They will be evenly distributed to Salvation Army, Goodwill, things of those such nature. Um, also, Teen Empowerment just had, a, had its fourth annual youth conference last Saturday. 
we had about 400 people show up, about maybe 350 in just teenagers. So that was something that was sponsored by the Rochester City School District, so I do thank you. I actually served as a youth facilitator, so I really enjoyed myself. Um, and I think that concludes my report for the day. For thank tonight. you. I'll, I'll ask that someone looks into um, making repairs to uh, that microphone at the end. Uh, board reports, Commissioner uh, Brennan. <clears throat> the policy committee met on October 11th and discussed increasing the legal dropout age to 17. Um, we are prohibited by state law from increasing that to 18. Uh, we discussed reviewing the parental involvement in school-based planning policies, which is is long overdue, and we hope to have a great deal of, of parent input as we go through that process. Um, amendments to the attendance policy and the reviewing, the systematic reviewing, um, and the more diligent systematic and regular review of all policies, um, and which, which the committee is actually supposed to be doing and has been supposed to be doing over the years and hasn't, has gotten a little behind on. And we're hoping to, uh, to establish a specific calendar to do that by identifying particularly those policies that have specific deadlines for review attached to them, um, giving priority to them. Um, with respect to the, the um, attendance policy, the policy committee would, would look at and I think would, would, would like to amend the current attendance policy to reduce the number of absences before a parent is contacted um, to include excessive tardiness to apply uh, to all students in grades 1 through 12 and to provide a makeup opportunity for these students. Um, the next committee meeting is um, yet to be determined. Thank you, Commissioner Brannon, Commissioner Elliott. Um, the Board Governance Committee uh, met in, um, in September and also October 11th, and you have a written report from September, uh, from um, our meeting in September. Um, but I would like to point out that uh, the Board Governance Committee convened a board, staff, a board retreat uh, where we also invited uh, uh, Superintendent Kayla to discuss goals of the board and also goals of the district and to make sure that they're in alignment. Um, we also um, just had an opportunity to, with the uh, consultation of Dr. Ruth Scott, to um, Learn about our learning styles, how we um, learn our styles of, of functioning so that we can work more effectively as a board. I don't have to tell you, we've had some tensions on these, in, these, on, in these meetings, but we come from different groups, uh, different, um, um, different dimensions and, and different uh, backgrounds, and uh, we um, say things or do things differently. So it was an opportunity for us to learn what styles that each of us have and to see how we can best utilize those styles and also appreciate those styles. So I thought it was a very good um, opportunity for us to get together. So much so that the uh, board has agreed to do another retreat um, in November or sometime uh, before the end of the year and at that time we will also invite whoever the new commissioners will be for the next term. So I'm just very excited about um, the progress that we're making to work together um, as a uh, group. Uh, you'll see that I'm not as fiery as I was when I first came, uh, although I still have fire. Um, but I'm pleased to say that I think that we are coming together uh, a little bit more cohesively. We're also looking at evaluating our board staff. Our board staff really has not been evaluated in a very long time, and so we're looking at the evaluation and compensation for our board staff. We're also going to look at, in the future, about reconfiguring, reconfiguring our staff. Uh, what are our needs as a board? And to look at, you know, what staff are needed um, for that. We'll also, we've been talking about it, we'll continue to talk about board committee reconfiguration. We want to make sure that uh, the committees of the board are aligned with uh, the various resolutions that come before us. Example, we have a number of program uh, resolutions that come before us, but they don't come to committee. We have, you know, a significant number of personnel resolutions, but they don't come through committee where we really have a time to discuss those um, those resolutions. Um, the next meeting is scheduled for October 22nd, where we'll continue to discuss, to discuss some of these issues. Thank you, President Garcia. Thank you. Commissioner Evans. 
Uh, the Community Intergovernmental Relations Committee will meet uh, next month. It is that time of the year again. I can't believe it. It's time for us to start discussing our legislative agenda. So as in years past, I will ask members of the board to forward um, ideas for items to be um, put on the legislative agenda for um, the le uh, in conjunction with the state legislative session, which will begin um, next year. Um, I know that there's been talk, obviously, about around the dropout age. There's been talk about um, transportation. So I know there's been a lot of, lot, lot of um, issues on the table that possibly could be submitted to this legislative agenda. So I would ask my colleagues to start think, give that a little bit of thought um, in advance of the um, CRGR meeting um, probably next month, sometime in mid-November. Also, just a reminder that the um, superintendent forms will be taking place um, on October 29th, 30th, and 31st, and also November 1st, all at East High School at 6 o'clock. Um, please feel free. Uh, they will be televised on RCTV 15. Um, please feel free to come out for one or um, all of those forms. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner Power. Yes, the Finance Committee met on Monday, October 15th. We reviewed uh, the financial, the monthly financial reports, and uh, I, uh, I would at this time move that the board uh, accept these financial reports. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you. In addition to the financial reports, resolutions 254 through 280 were all reviewed by the Finance Committee. 254 through 269 uh, fall under the category of educational facilities and will be voted on as a block. 270 through 278 fall in the category of procurement and supply, also will be voted on as a block. <coughs> Resolution 279 under information technology and uh, Resolution 280 is also um, uh, coming out of the, um, the Finance Committee. A note on Resolution 279, the uh, Finance Committee uh, approved this uh, Resolution 279 with the verbal understanding that there were credits to be applied to the resolution. Credits were gained after the resolutions packet was put together. So at the appropriate time, I will ask that Resolution 279A be substituted for 279. It reduces the overall cost uh, of the Oracle um, implement, uh, application uh, 8.9, fi financial application well, we can, we can ask that now if there's a consensus that we should replace uh, 279 with 279. Anybody objects to that? Then it's all replaced. Thank you. Just so that we know what we're voting on when we get there. Um, the next meeting is scheduled for November 20th, which is a Tuesday, uh, at 5.30 p.m. And that concludes my report. I do want to make sure that Later on in the agenda, um, President Garcia, if under new business, if I could be allowed some time to uh, talk through the New York State School Boards Association resolutions, I need to be able to cast my delegate vote next week. And that's under new business. You under want to new business. That up? That's fine. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Thompson. Thank you. Quality Assurance met on Monday, October 15th to preview the hiring report provided tonight by Ms. Jafrida. And uh, we asked, and she did provide the numbers as well as percentages in order to have a better picture of our staffing. Upon review, QA members made it clear, and Ms. Jafrida agreed, that the district needs to do a better job at recruiting staff members of color. We also believe, and based on, con on comments made tonight, uh, I would say we know this to be the will of the board. Our agenda on Monday had one dozen reports on it. The information was provided Friday in a three-inch binder, and we agreed that given the timing, the volume of the information was simply not comprehensible over one weekend. Although the committee members looked at the reports and a variety of questions were provided to the administration on them, we did not believe we could intelligently discuss all of the reports that evening. We do plan to discuss them further at a later date. And uh, we are working on developing with the administration 
a list of items and reports that need to be reviewed by QA for a recommendation to the full board. We're also working together to determine what type of information we want, how it should be pre presented, and beyond that, how the entire board might be kept abreast of non-actionable information provided uh, at the QA table. Uh, for some time, I've shared with my colleagues and doctors at Ivera and now Dr. Calla that the amount of material and the manner in which QA and the full board receives it needs a careful review and major adjustment. I'm awaiting recommendations from Dr. Calla and his cabinet, and my QA colleagues and I are also discussing this issue. We did briefly review the District and Corrective Action Audit Final Report and Three-Year Action Plan, which was submitted to the state in June 2006. It had been reported previously that QA would discuss these documents and that the action plan would be subject to board approval prior to submission. Upon investigation, we learned that New York State does not require board approval of these documents. Roberto Reyes of the State Education Department did comment that districts would likely want board endorsement in light of the large amount of local dollars required by the action plans. A, uh, a draft ELA action plan is in place. QA will continue to discuss this issue. Our next meeting is Monday, November 19th at 6 p.m. Our agenda includes a review of grades 3 to 8 test scores, an update on cohort 2006, and the end of year accountability report for 2006-2007. As always, everyone is invited to join us in room 3A. That concludes my report. Thank you, Commissioner White. Mr. President, the brevity of my audit committee report might suggest to some that we have not been engaged in uh, serious discussions about district business. However, rest assured we have. Uh, on October the 17th, we met, however brief, uh, to discuss the relationship of the claims audit department with the Auditor General and the board. The Auditor General and the claims department uh, audit staff will make some recommendations to the audit committee on how we sh they should interface. Uh, Mr. President, that does conclude my report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on then to the other agenda items, which would be then the consideration of resolutions. Uh, the first batch are human resources resolutions 234 through 253. I'll entertain a motion to approve those, please. So moved. Removed. Second. Uh, is there a second? Second. second. Uh, there are two seconds. I have been moved and uh, duly second. Uh, uh, any questions regarding those resolutions? Yes, Mr. President. Uh, Commissioner White. Thank you. Uh, I submitted questions to uh, the, the uh, superintendent's office, and I should thank Jeanette Silvers, who provided an answer to my question regarding Resolution 234. Uh, Dr. Kala, uh, is it fair to say, and, and you may correct me on this, that this acting program evaluator Will he or she will be responsible for identifying best practices? Is, there's a lengthy description for this person. I, I just want to know, is, is that a fair characterization of that uh, job? Uh, it's a fair characterization as part of that job, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. I have nothing further, Mr. President. <coughs> All in favor of those resolutions, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The ayes. Um, Commissioner Opposed, 234, 245, and 247. Anybody else? The ayes have them. Uh, the next resolutions are uh, educational facilities, uh, 254 through 269. I'll entertain a motion to approve those, please. So moved. Second. It's been moved and duly second. Uh, any questions regarding those resolutions? I, I would just, uh, President Garcia, uh, just remind um, uh, finance by way of uh, Superintendent Keller, by way of President Garcia, that we had discussed putting a, a maximum amount on those um, resolutions that did not have a maximum amount. They, you, you provi they, we were provided with um, some history, some historical um, payments, but um, I just feel more comfortable and would support it if it has um, a maximum amount in the resolution. Uh, I will support these uh, this time, uh, but I'm looking to have the maximum um, amount uh, included in the future. Thank you. Which uh, numbers would those be that you're talking about? Um, oh, there's a number of them. Some of it's like 263 to 264. It's uh, somewhere between 254 and 269. Yeah, uh, right. <clears throat> um, any other questions? 
Ms. Washington, how do you vote? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yes, you vote yes. <laughs> Everybody else, uh, how do you vote on this? Aye. 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 The ayes Aye. have it, and, and there's no opposition. Oh, 279A, is, are we voting on that, Commissioner Garcia? No, we, ha we, no we have not. We will, though, okay. pretty soon. Uh, the next group of resolutions are resolutions 270 through 278, and these are procurement and supply resolutions. I'll entertain motion to approve those, please. So moved. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. Duly second. Uh, any questions? Yes, President Garcia. Commissioner White. Yes, uh, I want to thank Gary Smith and Vincent Carfagna for providing a response to my question. Uh, although, I, I would like, if at all possible, for the superintendent to arrange for a meeting or a discussion about minority uh, 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 firms so that we could really understand, get a presentation about where the district is going, how we are going to increase the number of minority contractors. I understand by reading this response that it is not all the district's fault, that often minority contractors are not prepared to take these contracts, plus we have to deal with this issue of the lowest bid. But um, I, I guess my, my request would be that uh, perhaps we have some presentation about how this district can do a better job, not saying that we aren't trying, but a better job at getting these contracts, significant contracts, to people of color and women. Well, you know, I, I like to go a little a step further on that. We have been talking about this year after year after year after year, and nothing happens. And each time the board gets involved in it, uh, we have to investigate whether or not the board ought to set a committee to review the hiring of minority contractors, city of Rochester, uh, companies that are minority contractors to do some of these jobs. A lot of these jobs, many of jobs, window cleaning, right. uh, uh, maintenance jobs are going to companies outside of the city of Rochester who are non-minority. I mean, they can go to non-minority, but at least let them be city of Rochester companies. I mean, we, we, live, we live in this district. We are with our taxpayers in the district, and our tax money is being paid to people outside of this district. Uh, President Commissioner Garcia, I, I uh, strongly concur with your sentiments. In fact, in the Finance Committee, when it came to the snow plowing uh, contracts, you know, my comments was, I know there's some brothers out there that can move some snow. So um, I, I really believe that, uh, President Garcia, we probably should have some dialogue between the, uh, um, the school board and um, with uh, with the staff to try to figure out how do we um, get engaged people of color into this process. I know there's, there are certain laws or yeah, you can't, what? can'ts, but somehow there's got to be in our conversation that we can get to participate more people of color. And I'd like to be a part of that, right. President Garcia. I, I think uh, to not to be a dead horse, uh, <laughs> Commissioner Power. Uh, before we do leave that topic, I okay. do want to uh, give credit to uh, Vince's predecessor, uh, Jim Coney, who poached Shanae Lee from our staff specifically to work on uh, minority contract uh, issues. And I, I anticipate, hopefully, that, that that's one of the, the outcomes of losing one of our own terrific staff members. One last comment on this issue. The the, the, the major problem with the board is that the board doesn't understand exactly what the law requires in terms of bidding and hiring people and hiring companies and so on. But we should become very knowledgeable. We have to demand to be, to, to, to be educated on this process. And then we have to take, uh, 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 take the bull by the horn and create a process by which we decide then uh, who, who gets these contracts. Uh, based on, on where, they, where they live, where they reside, where their employees reside, and whether or not uh, the job can be done by, by somebody who doesn't need a, a PhD to wap, you know, wash windows or clean floors. So, President Garcia, am I, do I understand that you're going to take on this to begin to? I got a whole month to work on it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Two months. Um, that, that's up to the next poll, of course. I, I'm, I was just kidding. Um. <laughs> oh, you're not going to do anything on it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll call you in Florida, Domingo. 
Uh, resolutions and other questions on resolutions 270 through 278. Miss uh, <coughs> Washington, how do you vote? Did she leave? No, oh, she's there. Oh, she's there. Miss <laughs> Washington. I agree once again. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution 279A. So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Any questions? Uh, President Garcia, I, I'm, I'm, I'm voting no on this uh, resolution. I just was not comfortable um, with the fact that we are seeing Oracle USA come before us time after time after time. Um, and I, I just don't have the confidence that um, um, this um, program is uh, th that we're, we're being fiscally responsible with this, and that may be the wrong term, but I'm told that this is the only game in town, uh, but it just seems like a lot of money that we're spending on this particular um, product, and uh, Four Green is not around, and so I didn't feel comfortable with the explanation that I received, and so I, my vote was no on this. When it comes to your time to vote, Commissioner Elliott, um, we're in the question part. Oh, sorry. Uh, any other commissioner would uh, white? Yes, uh, Mr. President. Um, I, I, I have to admit, I believe I missed this particular resolution. And I, too, uh, share Commissioner Elliott's concerns about, because uh, in my prior life, I'd hear a lot about PeopleSoft and money that they had put into it. This is an old record being played time and time again. And I guess right now I'm not comfortable. This is a lot of money. And, and there was a lot of money that's already been spent on this people soft issue as I understand it. I mean, it's, this is in the millions of dollars, so that, I too would require. Let, let me, you know, I, I understand your concern, Commissioner White, and as, as I understand Commissioner Elliott. But uh, here, here I think is where lies our, our, uh, uncertain, uh, our uncertain feelings regarding this, this, this project. Um, to, to be, first, I think all of this money is reimbursable by the state to begin with. I, I'm almost sure. Am I mistaken on that, uh, Dr. Collins? About 80 percent. It's not. 90 percent? No. It's probably 80 percent. I don't know what percentage Well, a, a, a big part of this, I, I would say most of this money, if I remember correctly, is reimbursable by the state. Nevertheless, however, I, the problem that we have is that we haven't had any, any, expert, this, any experts evaluate whether or not these systems are being properly installed and managed. Uh, and I think it's about time before we continue to pour money into this uh, uh, type of uh, computer programs uh, that somebody does an evaluation as to whether or not we're adequately managing these programs and, and, and making full use of them. Uh, uh, however, uh, having said that, uh, you know, these versions do change, and do, we need to replace the old version with a new one that have greater capabilities. But right now, really, we don't know whether or not, <coughs> you know, that they are being well utilized. Uh, Commissioner Powell, you had a question. No? A, a comment, actually. The, there are many dollar figures captured in this resolution, but the pertinent one is that we're this resolution asks for an additional $322,000, not millions, $322,000. And what we get for that with the um, financials version 8.9 is we get uh, the, uh, the capacity to do a hard monthly close of our books, which is something we have never been able to do in this district in, in all of the time that, that we've been producing financial reports. This is a, a tremendous asset to the Finance Committee in particular. Um, I don't want to sing praises of PeopleSoft. Don't get me wrong there. I've been a critic of the um, decision to go to PeopleSoft since before the decision was made. I, I fought it be, uh, before there was a vote to be cast, and um, however, um, in some respects, uh, it's not entirely accurate to say it's the only game in town. However, we are tethered to it. We are committed to a course of action that would cost us many more millions to get out of. 
And what, the, what is being attempted at this stage is to bring ourselves up to a stable system where we then can stop making regular upgrades and utilize the PeopleSoft um, expertise that is, is beginning to build within our community and pay for, pay for the technical support through private contracts instead of through Oracle, which will eventually save us money. But we have to get to a stable platform first. Uh, I know I'm talking in jargon um, that's particular to my craft, but um, um, as someone who's worked in this field, I can only tell you that um, I reluctantly support this. President. Commissioner Evans. Yeah, um, in the Finance Committee, I too had uh, concerns um, about the resolution, but it's important um, from a historical perspective to under, for folks to understand that the district um, entered into this with the belief that this program would, um, br first off, bring the dist district into, to the, into the 21st century and eliminate some of the waste that we've had in the past. Now, it's important also for my colleagues to understand that this is not the last oracle resolution you're going to see, because there's going to be one that I think is probably even more so important than this one, and that's the one that's going to be used for the human resources, to bring that up to um, the 21st century and out of the Stone Age so we can start writing on index cards and those types of things. So really, although um, I'm sick of hearing about chancery and people soft and approving resolutions on that, um, I believe that, that, that this, this resolution will eliminate um, many of the um, technical difficulties and problems that have caused a lot of headache in this district. H however, the caveat is, is that it's important that um, folks be trained on it, that they use it, and also that because we own the PeopleSoft platform, not to think that we need to turn on every single one of the applications. Because, um, so we have to make sure we evaluate which applications we actually need within the PeopleSoft program. Because to turn on an application, it does cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, but but, but I, I say it is expensive. However, it, it is important that this district move into the 21st century into, in, in terms of technology. I think that it will save us more money um, in the long run. We are wedded to this, um, unfortunately. And, and if we don't uh, move forward, you know, we will continue to repeat some of the same issues that we've had, um, that prior boards have had. I would, I would definitely recommend the, uh, my colleagues to, uh, to support this resolution. Uh, with the caveat that there ought to be some accountability in terms of uh, some reporting to the board as to how this is being implemented and whether or not we are having success with the implementation of the program. Because uh, a, a upgrading a computer program is a long, drawn-out process, and in, uh, people have to be educated. And to hold it back would be to do any disservice, would be to do a disservice to the district. So having said that, uh, uh, Ms. Washington, how do you vote? Ms. Mr. President. Oh, you have a comment? I do have a, no, not a comment, a question. What's the urgency of this? I mean, I understand that com computer programs have to be updated. I'll, I'll let Commissioner White answer that question. I mean, oh. Commissioner Powell <laughs> answer the question, Commissioner White. Thank you. Um, I'm not entirely certain that there is a, an urgency specific to this resolution, but uh, uh, Vince could respond to that. Ms. Mr. Campagna will represent Dr. Callan the response. It's Thank retaining you. the consultants uh, on record, uh, the more experienced uh, consultants through February. It, it is the last upgrade or the last modification on the financials, on the financial module. And uh, we know that it's needed and it's required it's a, and it's to get maximum utilization of the module that is purchased. And that's the purpose of this. And it's the expertise that's on board now. It's in retaining those through the end of February. Uh, the delay in that would mean that the, the funds are not, a, not available for retention through February. The work is expected to be completed by the end of February on the financial module. And then, as uh, Commissioner Powell indicated, it's the next phase is the uh, human resource, the HR resolution. And just so you do know, that is a $2 million, $2 million and $75,000, that's the additional module. So you will see these coming piecemeal, but uh, you will see the next larger one, and that's a $2 million resolution sometime in the spring. Uh, Commissioner Powell. Um, I do want to call attention again to the difference between this resolution and, and the one that came in your packet. The difference is that this figure is $118,000 less 
And that was uh, essentially negotiated with our... Yes, uh, that was negotiated with um, Oracle because we didn't feel comfortable with the work they had performed. So it was negotiated and the 420,000 resolution that had been submitted is being reduced to 322 because we were not satisfied with the work they had performed. I, I think that the board is uncomfortable with the 1.8 million events, not, not necessarily mm -hmm. with the 322. Well, the right. 1.8 has already been spent. This is yes. the last, this is the last 300,000 to complete mm -hmm. the financial the, module. The, the Commissioner Thompson. I just wanted to make sure we're talking about this contract going through February 1st, not the end of February, correct? It's, it's, it's to complete the financial work and retaining the consultants presently on board to complete the work on the financial module. Mm -hmm. So it in says, other words, it says through February 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yes, it's, uh, it's the resolution. Of time. Okay. So we're talking about the last 322,000 having saved about $100,000 uh, that we received in credit. Commissioner Power. But to answer your question directly, Commissioner White, the, uh, what, the, the urgency is we have the consultants now. If the contract lapses those and we, and we discuss bringing them back at some future date, uh, that costs more. It's that and it's lost the that talent. Yes, it's that and it's the quality of the consultants. It has not been a singular consultant working on this project. Uh, the, it's piecemealed and it's the consultants that uh, Oracle makes available. We have the quality consultants on board now and that's the purpose of this resolution is to complete this package. Mr. President, one further question. And, yes. And perhaps Mr. Carfagna or Commissioner Powell could answer this. Uh, ultimately, let me say, I think we have to rely on our committees to, to flesh this stuff out. However, when this original contract was made up, did they offer to provide some services and and are they allowed to repeatedly just amend oh, these things? And, a, I mean, in, mm -hmm. in my world, you make an agreement to do something, you finish it out. Right. And if you don't, you breach your contract. But in this world, apparently, you don't finish something out, you just ask for more money. Is that, is that accurate? That's a really good question, and you, and you frame it very pointedly. I will, but my understanding, and Vince can back me up, is that it is not, it's not Oracle who changed the scope of the project. It was our side that changed the scope and the requirements. Once there was a greater understanding of what financials 8.9 could do, things that in the original contract, this district said, oh, we don't need that, and we don't need that, and we don't need that. Well, once they saw uh, how they tied into the larger integrated picture, decision was made not just we should have done that, but we can't live without that. That's, it's not the vendor's fault. It's, it's, it's decisions made here in our institution. Thank you for Thank the you. discussion. Okay. We're going to vote now. Uh, Ms. Washington, how do you vote? No. <laughs> <laughs> all, knew, all in favor, please. I'm sorry, but I never knew Chancery and everything cost that much. Okay. Uh, all, in, all in favor, please say aye. I think aye. I like her. Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> That's my girl. Okay. Uh, no, per, uh, President Garcia, that vote. The ayes have it. Okay. Uh, we'll move on then Great. to resolutions 280 through 300. I'll entertain motions to approve. Um, so moved. President let, let me amend that. Yeah, there's a I'll, um, uh, 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 please, I, I would like for you to withdraw that uh, the motion and, and have a new motion. Thank you. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve resolutions 280 through 297. So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Uh, any questions regarding those? Commissioner Thompson. Yes. I just have a quick question on resolution 292 and 296. Um, I don't know if anybody is here from the library services to answer my question on 292. Well, Dr. Kala answers all questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bye. All right, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have someone here from the library? Here we go. Linda, Linda Sundloff, thank you. My question, Dr. Kala. Yes. Uh, Thank you, first of all. This person is going to answer. Yes, I know. <laughs> Thank you to uh, Ms. Cruttenden for the response to my question it's, um, about the role of the uh, Library Council. Yeah. Uh, it says that uh, we take part in the development of a plan of service that covers 
a number of service areas, one of them That's being correct. service to special client groups. So I'm just curious as to what those services are to which special client groups. Uh, in the past, uh, special, the special client uh, groups have been bilingual students, mm -hmm. where we have identified summer reading lists for Spanish-speaking students, K through 12. This year, we have identified children who have uh, had issues of grief and loss. And we're going to be uh, developing uh, some resource lists so that the schools can collect books and materials that can be sent and used when we do have an issue of grief or loss in the district. And, and one other service, I'm sorry, one other activity, I guess, or service is cooperative efforts with other library systems? Yes. What does that entail? Uh, the, this school library system cooperates with the four regional school library systems, Monroe, Bo, uh, Monroe one and two BOCES, Wayne Finger Lakes BOCES, and Genesee Valley BOCES, and we cooperatively bid online databases. Okay. And we, have, we also uh, participate in a large union catalog of all the resources of all the schools in the Rochester area okay. for resource sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor of... Oh, just, yes, on a different resolution. Okay, fine. Go ahead on the other one. On resolution uh, 296, uh, Tom Kaza was good enough to respond. It has to do with the uh, waiving of the rent for the, community, for the community room over at Wilson, for lack of a better word. Uh, it says that the reason we're waiving the repayment of a loan for 10 years is because uh, if either party wanted to terminate the lease, the district would be required to pay UNCGR. And um, my question is, if we wanted to, to uh, terminate the lease, what is the dollar amount that we would be required to repay at some point over the next 10 years for which this loan is being waived? You're asking that question to Dr. Callum? Did I, did I ask that clearly enough? I'm interested in the dollar amount that we would be required to pay in the last 10 years that we are waiving this loan if we decided that we wanted to terminate the lease. When we put the uh, agreement together, in the lease there is an appendix, I think it's appendix H, H. as I recall, mm -hmm. and it spells out, it's basically a reverse mortgage, if you will, it's a straight line mortgage. Uh, it takes their original investment, which was, I believe it was $1.6 million, and then it just backs it down to the point after which 20 years passes, it goes to zero. Uh, so at, at the point at 10 years, I believe it's 800, as I recall looking at it the other day, 800, $880,000, I believe, and would it be would paid. Down by $88,000 every year Roughly. until down to zero? Correct. Okay. okay. President Garcia, uh, just to, 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 um, to piggyback on that, I guess I just didn't think UNCGR was in existence any longer. Can you explain a, that? A mortgage is a mortgage. Uh, whether a they're in existence or not, somebody owns that mortgage. Right. right. So, so this organization? Somebody owns the mortgage. Uh, All right, so do we need to uh, reword the resolution? It because it has in it, in lieu of the contribution to um, contribution of UNCGR, unless I'm reading it wrong. But no, but that, that, that's true. The, the contribution was through UNCGR. But whether or not they are in assistance is irrelevant because if they are not in assistance, somebody must have taken that mortgage and we're responsible to that other party, whomever they are. The language Maybe of the I'm reading actually it. states that. It, okay. If there is a a successor to the original parties and their purpose and goals remain essentially the same as far as the services that they provide and then we would still honor the lease with that new party and the name gets placed into the lease on any renewal. Okay. Uh, all in favor of resolutions 280 through 97 uh, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Um, President Garcia, I have to abstain from Resolution 280, and I vote no on Resolution 297. Thank you for the abstention. I totally forgot that you have to abstain on that resolution. Um, 
Now we, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve resolutions 298 and 299. Uh, is there a motion to approve? 299A. Oh, 299A. So moved. Second. Uh, it's been moved and second. Any questions on those two resolutions? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. In, on unfinished business, I'd like to bring up the Bente issue. Um, Wait, oh, 300, 300. Resolution 300. 300. I don't have to, Oh, 300. I'm sorry. Yes, we have one more. I'll enter the motion to approve resolutions 300. So, so moved. moved. Uh, Questions? Is there a second? Where is, where, I didn't see the resolution. I'll make, make a second one. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, questions, oh, Commissioner yeah. Power. Uh, this is a resolution that came to us after the packet had been closed out. Um, <coughs> and uh, I'd like an explanation why this missed the deadline and, and, and why the dollar amount is as high as it is. Dr. Kala? I can't answer the first question. Uh, as to why, when it came, but I can answer any question about Encompass. Mm -hmm. uh, Encompass, uh, just to give you a, a bulleted uh, uh, piece, and I will—I ha have a folder uh, that has a, a, a lengthier uh, explanation of what it's all about. Uh, it's a uh, five at one uh, C3 non-for-profit. It's been in existence since 2004, uh, created by the Norman Howard School. Uh, it has a 25-year history for uh, Norman Howard School serving students with disabilities grade 5 through 12. The program emphasizes uh, the identification of student strengths to, imp uh, to improve uh, uh, performance outcomes. It focus focuses on uh, maximizing student strengths and supporting areas of challenge through the collection of formal and informal data to develop individualized learning plans views the child in a holistic manner, which includes his or her cognitive, social, emotional, and physical developmental skill uh, levels. It targets the development of language and literacy skills. It incorporates uh, direct instruction of strategies that can be applied across content areas, fosters independence and in reasoning, critical thinking, and problem-solving abilities. It enhances the knowledge, skills, and attitudes of families and professionals by increasing the understanding of learning development and the skills and strategies that help struggling learners. It increases the community's knowledge, commitment, and leadership for early identification of and intervention of for individuals who struggle to learn. The year one funding, uh, Encompass funding, is 900,000 and year two is 900,000. Uh, the program um, came about, oh, I, I, Two years ago, Libby? Last year, so the beginning of last year. And um, if, there's, you know, if there's anything else that... I think Kim is right to answer. I was just going to respond to why it was okay. okay, go ahead. Concerns were brought to the table from RTA, and we weren't able to meet with them until after the board packet had been forwarded to board members. And once we held our meeting and uh, addressed all of their concerns, the next concern was that had we not attempted to put the resolution in for this board meeting, that we would be almost a month and a half out again into November, and the program is on hold. And we have schools that are really looking forward and uh, anxiously awaiting the support to continue what we started last year. And then the new schools that will be added are also waiting to begin the program. So that's why we forwarded the resolution after the fact. Mm -hmm. President Garcia. Uh, and, um, let, let me start this way. Sure. Uh, Commissioner Elliott, Commissioner Thompson, and then Commissioner Powell. Just to refresh my memory, I, I believe we received this after the QA meeting, which was held Monday evening. So there's no way it could have been brought to QA, right? We got this after Monday evening. Commissioner Power. Uh, 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 I'm want sorry. To answer to Commissioner okay. Yes, Dr. Keller is going to respond to Commissioner Thompson. Um, no, actually, it's, it's, I'm going to probably respond with a question because I'm, I'm not a historian here, given the time I've been here. But this program was started last year, so um, you know, was there any presentation on Encompass last year at all? I would have to check the agenda. Don't ask me to lie about okay. what we covered I last year. I know, I know it was. Yeah, I, 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 I I'm program. almost sure that this program was presented last year. This, is, uh, this was uh, highly supported by Richard Sands. Yes, Richard Sands, yes. Brand. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it deals with 
kids with learning disabilities, and we supported it strongly back then. And I hope that we support this strongly right now. The, the history behind, because I've met with uh, Richard Sands several times uh, regarding the history of the development of the program here in Rochester, and of course, my own knowledge of Norman Howard, and the history is uh, that you know, Norman Howard is extremely successful with dealing with uh, kids with particular learning disabilities, and uh, uh, seeing how successful they were and how expensive it is to send kids to Norman Howard that it seemed uh, intelligent to look at this replication of the program in our own district so that we wouldn't have to be able to export our kids in order to get the, the kind of services that they were getting at Norman Howard. And that's the reason why this program was started, Commissioner no, I, uh, Power yeah, and then the, Commissioner Evans. Um, from a financial standpoint, is do, does this contract qualify for extraordinary aid for for um, our disabled students <clears throat> or because we're bringing it in and servicing more children uh, it, are we is it going to be using up our regular special ed um, state dollars uh, without without benefit of being able to, to capture extraordinary need or extraordinary aid I don't believe that we will be able to capture extraordinary need aid with this, but we will be able to get special education support aid for this. I, I, that's like the floor as opposed to extraordinary being well, the ceiling. Well, it's, it's, you have to look at it. It's, uh, the, again, you get, uh, you get a lot through extraordinary need, but the cost is so incredibly high that there's still a significant cost by sending kids out to programs that are as costly as Norman Howard. Is there... Is this program integrated in, in any meaningful way with the Great Beginnings in terms of uh, ad addressing uh, issues uh, at the front end uh, before they become more costly? Uh, I don't see why that couldn't be a part of, of the, the overall long-term plan, but you know, that, those two programs really were, were designed the actually in, in, in their own separate and as separate entities. Mm -hmm. okay. Commissioner Elliott. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Evans, and then Commissioner Elliott. No, I, I was just going to say that um, I get calls from parents all the time, <laughs> and it's interesting that they call and they want to know how I can get them into the Norman Howard School because of this Encompass program. Um, uh, any, anyone that wants to see how you're supposed to deal with kids that have um, developmental learning learning disabilities should go over to Norman Howard because they do it in a way that is that is excellent and, they, and it, using this Encompass model. So it's great to be able to tell parents that we're going to have um, a version of this in the district because it really addresses, I think, um, the whole child. And I've been, I've, I've been a supporter of um, Norman Howard. I'm, I'm a supporter of public education. I'm a supporter of the district. But Norman Howard gets it when it comes to dealing with kids that have um, issues that we, may, we sometimes overlook um, in this district. Commissioner Elliott. Well, that brings up the question, why do they get it and we don't? And so somehow we're going to have to not rely on the expertise of, other, expertise of others and bring in the, our own, develop our own expertise, because I really do believe that this school district can be like a Norman Howard. Now, having said that, my, a couple of questions. One is, um, how, how many students are um, involved in, in this program? And secondly, why was it funded under the Department of Diversity and Leadership Development? Uh, can you answer the student question on that, Libby? And if you right. who's, who's the one doing the talking? Can they stand up? Oh. Will, you, will you come up to the mic, please? Because we can't hear you very well from back there. I'll just make a comment before um, I go any further. I think, in a sense, the best way to look at this is really a paradigm shift for us. Traditionally, we have used what is known as a deficit model. Right. We review data. Most often, at this point, it's like New York State tests. But whatever test data we might have, 
And then we make decisions based on that data about what students can't do and what they have not learned. And then we try to develop instruction around what they don't know and what they can't do. The strengths-based model is, and it's research-based, really looks at, as um, Mr. Evans said, the whole child, okay, taking into consideration more than just that academic need. And every child has a strength of some kind or sort, whether it be academic or not. Part of what goes on with Encompass and makes it holistic, it's not just about academics, it's about a, a child learning about himself as a learner. His strengths, his weaknesses. We teach the strengths. We use strengths to teach toward challenges. That's the idea. And the idea is to bring the model into the district, work with it, and ultimately, for lack of a better word, maybe not technically, but adopt it, and certainly adopt the thinking and the uh, philosophy behind it. Because as you know, um, or have been told, Norman Howard is extremely successful in graduating students with Regents diplomas. And this will not only serve students with special education needs, it will also serve general education students in the district. Just one last piece that I would add. In, in, in my initial meetings uh, with uh, Norman Howard Group, uh, it, that has been you know, one of the pieces that, that uh, has attracted me to it because it is uh, not a deficit model. And I'll also, you know, that's why I'm also pushing assets. You know, the, 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 uh, the, uh, it's, it's an asset model relative to learning. And uh, assets is a, is a model that looks at the positive developmental assets of children right. in order to get them to move forward and builds on their strengths, not looking at what they don't have, but try to make sure that they get what they don't have. So it's, a, it's a, an extremely a powerful and positive model that Wayne has shown uh, quite a bit of, uh, uh, we've, it's very encouraging what we've seen so far. Uh, I, I would ask uh, uh, Vince, you know, do you, I, I don't know if I'm putting you on the spot with regards to the bucket that this is coming out of. Uh, do you do you know exactly uh, you know which it, 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 it mentioned in the uh, in the resolution it says it's funded by the Department of Diversity and Leadership Development and of course this is the first time I'm seeing the uh, because this was an add-on so the I only reason that it's in Michelle's house is because Libby at the time is supervised in, in the organizational structure Libby is supervised by Michelle so it may end up moving as the organizational structure changes. Right. And uh, my, my, thank you for that, Kim. Um, my, uh, my final uh, comment is, is, again, this is <coughs> not something that I have uh, been unaware of. And uh, I have done a, a lot of work and research on this and that I would, uh, I wholeheartedly support this and would ask the board to support this. Uh, Mr. President. Uh, Commissioner White. Thank you. Uh, a comment first and then a question. Um, I use by way of example Resolution 279, which we discussed today, and if you may recall, I indicated that uh, we have to trust our committees, and I said uh, Resolution 279 was vetted through that process. Finance said they had their explanation behind supporting that resolution. What is a bit troubling to me is this is almost twice the amount of money, and this was not vetted through QA. I, I, I think recently, I mean, this is a, a new allotment of money, and we are being told today uh, within hours of, or a week within which this money must be spent, there's an urgency attached to it that we've got to pass this. Um, I just don't think that we're consistent in our logic. If, if we have to vet uh, $400,000 through a committee like finance or PeopleSoft, I think when it comes to our children, we ought to be allowing QA to uh, pass through this stuff. I'm not saying I don't support the education of kids who have academic challenges, that's not my point. I don't want anybody to accuse me of saying I'm not sympathetic to your cause. But the fact is we have a supervisory responsibility. We exercise it appropriately in finance, but I think there are some lapses when it comes to $900,000 doesn't go through q and I, I think that's troublesome. <clears throat> if I could uh, make a comment on that. Um, 
I think that's what we're struggling with, yeah. with the amount. Like you said, we, we, we spend, uh, if you look, take our budget and you divide it, we spend $50 million a month. Right. And trying to come up with a, with a plan that gets information to the appropriate committee in a way that is manageable, readable, and digestible is something that you know, I, I know uh, uh, Commissioner Thompson has been talking about and that uh, others have as well, uh, that we all have to come up with a, with, with a way that you know, we, we could provide all of this information, but it's also it can't be an information dump as well. So it has to be something that is manageable, and I hope that we could work out that so that you know, we're, when we, we, we have a, a, a meeting, we're up here on the dais, that we could be happy with this and celebrate it right. instead of be concerned about it. President Garcia, uh, just to, to point out um, that the Board Governance Committee uh, talked about a work session. So in addition to having um, the regular board business meeting, that we also look at having a work session so many of these issues and resolutions can be discussed. I will also uh, remind my colleagues that we are also looking at board committee reconfiguration on the board governance committee. So all of those, those issues that are being discussed in the board governance. I, um, <clears throat> I think we should move on. Uh, the, the concerns are, are well noted. Uh, and and uh, the concerns of the board, as well as the concerns that the superintendent has uh, expressed regarding delaying the program, um, I, I understand our frustration. However, we haven't developed a, 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 an effective process. We are talking about it, and we will develop an effective process. Until we do so, I urge you to support this program. I know about the program. It is a very good program. It's very helpful to our students, and it ought to be supported. So, Commissioner Brennan, I'm sorry. I, did I miss you before? No. Okay, fine. I, Go ahead. I would only add one more comment, President Garcia. That I, this is a budgeted item. This is something that we had talked about last year as a board and had been right. um, integrated into the budget. My concerns. Uh, were more of timeliness and I, not of substance. I understand, Commissioner Brennan. Oh, fine. So, uh, without further ado, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Nay. Two nays. The ayes have it. Thank you. Um, that concludes our resolutions, uh, and we have uh, the next agenda item is unfinished business. We only have one item on their unfinished business, and that is to comply with the legal requirement of the court to send a letter to Bente. Uh, um, uh, explaining our actions f uh, regarding uh, an improper, I forgot the practice. terminology. Improper practice. Pra improper practice uh, suit. I would like uh, uh, Mr. Luby to, to uh, just explain why the letter is worded as such and what it will accomplish. Thank you, Mr. Luby. At the administrative hearing at PERB, uh, we had argued and with a, a, a great deal of sympathy from the administrative law judge that the uh, letter that Commissioner Elliott had shared with uh, members of the Bente Union was within uh, the proper scope of her individual decisions uh, consistent with policy 2111. She, there was nothing in that that represented that she was speaking on behalf of the board or doing anything other than explaining a point of view and inviting, uh, uh, inviting comment. Um, we had argued, and it appeared that we uh, were moving towards success uh, on, on, uh, with the idea that it was a, a freedom of speech issue, that it was not a proper subject of an improper practice charge. Uh, but the administrative law judge had proposed uh, that to resolve the issue, to give the uh, union a chance to save some face, that the union would ag uh, agree to withdraw the charge if the board would uh, send a letter say, uh, saying essentially uh, that the letter in question did not violate the policy and in that way uh, preserve, preserve the latitude that every board member past and present and future has uh, to uh, have individual expression in letters and radio shows without having to wait for a campaign. Um, I agreed that I would make that recommendation uh, to you and I have. 
Uh, Bente has, uh, since we last discussed this, uh, kept their part of the agreement and has sent a letter to PERB, which I forwarded to you, withdrawing the complaint, and PERB, uh, for its part, has uh, ag agreed to dismiss the charge. So what's remaining is um, action on my, my request uh, to uh, the President and his in turn to the Board for uh, authorization to send a letter. I drafted a letter. There's nothing sacred about the draft. It could be something else. But the idea uh, is to, to uh, respond to Bente that says, yes, we've, we've heard them that nothing there violated 2411 or 2111. We'll respond. The matter is dead and the case is withdrawn. So I'll, I'll just ask you to support the wording of that letter so I can sign it and get this matter over with. Um, um, is there consensus for me to sign this letter? Hearing no objections, then I will sign the letter. Thank you very much. Now we're going to move on to um, a new business. Uh, we have we have two, two matters of new business. Um, the evaluation of superintendent, who's, who's going to speak about that? Well, it, um, um, I, I will respond to it. Um, the evaluation of the superintendent basically is for us to begin to look at our instrument of how we evaluate our superintendent and to begin this process um, um, in light of the fact that we're looking at a new superintendent coming on board. And so we need to look at from the Board Governance Committee um, what that process of evaluating our superintendent is going to be. What are the um, areas that we are going to evaluate him on? Fine. And so that's what we're looking at. So then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll move that item to uh, the Board Governance Committee to decide and make recommendations to us I think on, there's some on the evaluation. Just a quick question. So has the Board Governance Committee come up with a template yet, or is that something you're looking at? We're looking at it. Oh. They're looking at it. So they shouldn't and should have been on the agenda, actually. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Power has uh, something to share with us, uh, since she will be attending a conference very soon and needs for us to take a vote on, on some matters. All right. Thank you. Actually, it's, it's much more lengthy this year than in previous years, but I need to get um, essentially uh, vote of the board on each of these items so that then I can in turn cast them on behalf of the board. Um, I believe everyone got a booklet like this in their front, not this past Friday, but the Friday before. Um, and um, it includes each resolution, the rationale, and the recommendation of the NISBA resolution committee. If I could go, uh, see how fast I can go through each one, OK? okay. Um, and, and try not to stall on any of them in particular. The first is a resolution seeking legislative repeal of essentially the Taylor Law Triborough Amendment. The, um, superintendent, the uh, resolution committee uh, recommends approval. I personally would be voting no. Uh, I don't see that, uh, uh, I don't see that revoking the Triborough amendment is necessarily going to be helpful either in contract negotiations or in um, uh, avoiding uh, strikes. So, uh, but, the, but the resolution is to seek a legislative repeal of the Taylor Law Triborough Amendment. Um, and uh, my recommendation to the board is that we vote no. Question? Yes. What? If, yeah. If, if we are voting no, then what, we don't have to vote no, just let's not take any action on it. Well, I have to be able to carry a vote okay, on each, fine. in each one, and, and, this, and we would actually be going contrary I, to the I understand. recommendations. Commissioner Thompson. What's the rationale in support of this resolution? Uh, the rationale uh, essentially uh, states that, and I'll quote, the so-called automatic salary increments during contract negotiations create an uneven playing field for the purposes of collective bargaining. That's the rationale they state. It's also exactly why I disagree with them. I don't believe it does create an uneven playing field. Okay. You want to take him individually? 
Uh, yes, please. Oh, so you're moving. I have uh, actually a question about this. Just yes. A, pro a process question, actually. Yes. You know, having been a delegate to these conventions on, from other school boards, mm -hmm. um, is it the practice of this board? Has it been the practice of this board? that we instruct the delegate on each issue? That's right. That's okay. essentially why I need a, why a vote on each item. So is because I won't be voting my own conscience. I'm going to be voting the position of the board. OK. On, on rare occasions, have we polled the board in order to yeah. offer direction to our delegate? Right. On rare occasions. So right. generally speaking, we, there's, there's ample precedent for not giving instruction to the delegate. Right. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Okay, and, and, I, I, and I wonder that those since occasions you'll be participating be in the deliberations it's right. in the discussions and the debates on our behalf, it seems to me that to send you there instructed on each of these issues would would um, perhaps diminish that process that people will be going through right. at the convention would, I, I, I'm happy would, I agree, you, would I you like to send me with an I open book right. uh, seriously I think that we, we the, is there a consensus to put our trust on Commissioner Powell and let her vote her conscience at this convention so she's going to be listening to the discussion pro and for this uh, uh, resolutions well I yeah. thought she had to have I only I only no. caution you to be careful what you wish for yeah I, I thought she had to have a <laughs> vote well, it, if we if, give her the right to vote her it, conscience, it, then if we someone, don't need... If the motion to have... have it's a consensus. We didn't okay. take a vote. Everybody agrees to you. So you got all... Uh, you got all we trust you, and if you don't exactly. do what we, we trust you to do, then we'll get right. you when you come back. If you vote the wrong <laughs> way, well, boy, we get even. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we want that on our I conscience. That's the I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Ms. Washington. I... No, no, she wants the authority. She's just asking to be nice. She's, I love her. She's <laughs> pretending to be modest. Thank you for yeah. speaking for me, right? <laughs> uh, the next item on the agenda. President Garcia, I, I just had, I, I may be out of order, and please tell me if I am. I wanted to, I did want to comment about the, um, the Bente letter, but. You're, you're out of order. Okay. <laughs> what about a motion? Just write another letter. The motion. Well, motion. What, I wanted to, what I wanted to say is, is that in light of this. No, no, you're out of order. All right. Matter is dead. Let's move on. Okay. Speakers, I'll talk to on you after other than agenda items, we have a list. I ask you, please, to keep the three-minute rule. Uh, we have
فهمت امرك ديت كان ديب كان هيك غاوي انا مارك ماي فراني ان ترجمه هيك لانجو ان وهالان سماي او سكور غون اي او سبيشال نون سماي مارك ساس ان كونسلان ثانك يو غود افتنون ماي نيم از باراكا اوسمان اي ام ا ممبر اوف ذا سومالي بنتو كوميونيتي اسوسيشن اوف روتشستر ذا سومالي بنتو بيبل هاف بين سافرين سينس ذا سيفل وير ان سوماليا ويتش ستارت ان 1990 and they, they have grown up in, ref, in refugee camps and have never been to school. The current school program is to place students based on their age. Our suggestion is for the first six months to one year, have a program that teaches basic reading, writing, and math skills, or place them based on their education level. Somali Bantu children and parents are willing to learn regardless of their age. As they show progress, then move them up and place them at a higher level where they can succeed. Thank you. Is there a relationship between your, your, your group and, and, and the association? Yeah. It's yeah. Just okay, it's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, that concludes uh, the number of speakers. Mr. Gary Thompson here had requested to, to speak, but then withdrew the request to speak, even though that he's president. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to move into the executive session. So moved. Oh, no. um, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 We'll move into the executive session. Oh, okay. Actually, there are several 3020A resolutions that the uh, NISPA wants to consider, too, so. Yeah, we trust you to make the contact. Actually, I was just off of the It's a pleasure. I'm going to enjoy you being here. Yeah, you do. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll be there. Um, they're making arrangements for the schools now. So I'll be coming out there. Okay. I'll let you know when I'm coming out. All right. Oh, right. But, yeah. Hi. Good. How you doing? How are you? My alma mater. Graduated a long time ago from there. Absolutely. Now, what program are you all in? Oh, okay. Okay, great. You're welcome. Certainly. You're welcome. Well, you can sign them too. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. I don't know if that's exactly what we're doing, but yeah, they wouldn't have any names in there. I think it's going to be a different announcement that may be coming out. Yeah, yeah but that's what I got to find out tonight. Yeah. I believe it's here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, it looks good. Oh, huh? I 